Hong Kong, a city that used to shine with peace and prosperity, was plunged into mass protests and violence. Many media reports labeled them as pro-democracy, but stopped short of telling the other side of the story, about a democracy that is in quagmire. Hong Kong, a global financial center and regional trading hub, boasts one of the world's most vibrant open economies. Since last June, however, the city has sunk into chaos. The peaceful rallies against an amendment bill quickly spiraled into violence. All the acts of lawlessness are done only in the name of democracy. We shall continue our fight for democracy and freedom. It is a reflection of Nazism to anti-state, sabotage, arson. These are not the signs of democracy seekers. The law of the land is supreme in the national interest of the people. And this is not fighting for democracy and human rights. Whoever is fighting for democracy and human rights has to be very calm in demonstrations. On many occasions, protesters were carrying the Union Jack and the Stars and Stripes calling for foreign intervention. By f holding a foreign flag shows that they are not really fighting for freedom and democracy. If they are fighting to become a colony of a foreign country, that is to become a colonial outpost of a foreign country, to be used and abused by foreign powers in a very stupid way. Before returning to the motherland in 1997, Hong Kong had been under British colonial rule for more than 150 years. Back then, all governors were appointed by the British monarch. They were given absolute power over execution, legislation and jurisdiction. And local residents never once had a chance to choose their own leader. The British uh, didn't run any colony with democracy. It wasn't the way we did it. When we were leaving, we did try to uh, create some forms of democracy. Democracy is something that takes root over time. Before 1997, the British Hong Kong government on two occasions rejected the introduction of democracy in Hong Kong. They only started introducing democratic development after they learned that they needed to hand Hong Kong back to China. Among the protesters were many young people born after Hong Kong's return to the motherland. It was after Hong Kong's return to the motherland that the city saw progress of political freedom and democratic rights on the ground. The basic law, the HKSAR's mini constitution, gives universal suffrage as the ultimate goal for the development of democracy. If we are saying that we want to have political reform, universal suffrage, let's say, it is stated in the basic law. Since 1997, we have made a lot of progress. We now have a majority of legislators elected by universal suffrage. The development of democracy has not been smooth. And we have three types of attempt. 2005, 2010 and 2015. Try to execute the relevant provisions in the basic law as to follow the basic law to develop our political system towards universal suffrage. 
But the opposition ruled two times, 2005 and 2015. They did not accept any kind of incremental change. In recent protests, the opposition uses democracy as a leverage to justify the riots. They demand for implementation of complete universal suffrage as one of the major demands as a prerequisite to end the violent protests. Let me come back to the way they are asking for like sort of democracy or universal suffrage. It's completely sarcastic. The way they are using to ask for what they want is completely counterproductive. How can Hong Kong's democratic development get back on track? Many say solutions can only be found within the basic law. But first and foremost, the violence needs to stop. There is no solution without prior ending of violence. And solutions must be based on the rule of law, principle of rule of law. I think to promote democratic development, we must act in accordance with our mini constitution, as well as the decisions made by the National People's Congress Standing Committee. That is, in a gradual and orderly manner. The bottom line is that representation and democracy-related changes cannot be done through protest activity and must be done in a consensual manner sitting with the existing government. Uh, Hong Kong is not part of any other country. So it's only China that will help to determine the future of Hong Kong. Those who don't understand that or don't accept that will have to learn a very difficult lesson.